All right, everybody. Hello and welcome to Bronze to GM Protoss. We're going to be kicking off with a game straight away. And of course, this is a show where we will be teaching you guys how to play uh, Protoss. We're going to be focusing on showing you a lot of different skills. Um, obviously, the most important thing is to get your settings, mechanics, hotkeys, right? We're going to show you that right after the first game. Um, similar to my Bronze to GM Terran, uh, go ahead and uh, check out, of course, down below in the description if you want to get into it straight away. And you can skip past the first game if you want to get straight to that. But we're going to show you guys the kind of general beginner build order. We're going to start with that. And then we're going to go over from that into the mechanics side of thing. And most of that is going to be almost identical to my Terran mechanics. So honestly, that section is going to be very short after this game where I'm going to say, go check out Bronze to GM Terran. So we're going to have a link down below um, to the Bronze to GM Protoss document right at the top of that document. And you guys can see it right now if you're watching live. Uh, exclamation mark BDGM doc. There is a link. It says mechanics. Look, this is the same I use for Terran. Just here you go. Here's a link. Watch that 20 minutes of Bronze to GM Terran. And that kind of shows you the general mechanics. The only real difference here is I don't think I set up rapid fire at all for Terran during Bronze to GM. We are going to show you guys how to do rapid fire. Um, rapid fire setup for warping in every unit type. I don't use rapid fire for any Protoss abilities at all. Um, maybe if I used mass Phoenix more, I would use it for Phoenix lifts. That's definitely an option. Uh, I don't use it though. I don't I don't play much Mass Phoenix. I, sometimes I, I like Phoenix versus Terran. Very rarely play heavy, heavy Phoenix though. I, the times I go past 10 Phoenix, um, probably only really in PvP if I end up in a Phoenix war, but even that's something I tend to avoid because I prefer a bit more of an asymmetrical situation. Uh, so obviously guys, we are starting in Bronze 2. And it looks like, I think our MMR is about 14, 17, 14, 17. So obviously it's going to take us a while to, to get on up the ladder. Does making multiple races make you a stronger player or should you focus on one race? You should play whatever you find fun. Um, if you play multiple races, it's kind of fun because you get a bit of different perspective. So it's always nice to do a bit of playing the other races. At the same time, there's so much to learn even within a single matchup, like just Zerg versus Zerg, for instance, is such a complicated matchup. So you are spreading your practice across more things. And as a result, you're not gonna be as focused in your practice. All right, guys, let's talk you guys through it. We are doing a standard build. First thing, hotkey that next is start building probes. And we're gonna rally down to the natural. Now you only wanna queue up two probes to start. And when the first one pops out, we're going to rally back to the Nexus. We're then going to take this guy. We're going to build a pylon. And then we're going to send him back to mine. We're going to build more probes as well. I'm also going to set up my camera locations. That's my first base. That's my second base. That's my third base. Now this probe here, we want to rally back to the front. Getting used to playing with our probe rally is really good, guys. Notice we've got another probe queued up as well. And the moment that probe pops, we chrono boost. We build a gateway and go for a scout. And then we queue up another probe. And after the gateway, so it's 16 gate, 17 gas. And notice I built the gas. Shift click back to the minerals. So let's keep queuing up probes here, guys. And I've got my third base. That's my fourth base. This is my fifth base. And this is my rally point at the front of the natural. So notice we've got 17 there. That's too many, guys. So what we're going to do is we'll take a probe, put him there. And then we're going to rally our 19th probe to our natural expansion, okay? Once he pops out, rally back to the gas geyser. And then this guy here, we're just waiting for 400 minerals. We're going to build a nexus, and then we're going to rally over there to build a cyber core. Now, our opponent is attacking us, so <laughs> let's go hide our probe behind our opponent's expansion, shall we? Okay, so we've queued him to just go stand down there. Now we're going to add this to our nexus control group. Notice we've got two next eye on there. So just select it, shift. In. For me, it says seven. For you guys, it probably won't be that. And then we double tap that, send to the camera location. We then build a cyber core. Now, once you put down the Nexus and the cyber core, notice we stopped on 20 probes that whole time. And he actually just killed my probe or a Chad. So that's gonna change the supply count, but you can imagine we're on 21. On 21, you take a gas. And then on 22, we're gonna take a pylon. So our second pylon would go down on 22. And then we're basically just going to saturate this gas. And at that point, we'll have 16, 3, 3. And then we can rally to the natural. 
So this is a very standard opening and we're just taking it really slow and trying to explain all these basics. There's going to be things I miss and have to explain again in a little bit. Now when your warp gate, your cyber core finishes, you want to chrono boost both of these. Stalker, warp gate, okay? And we're always going to start our game with three stalkers because stalkers are a really just beautiful general purpose unit. Now, after you've done that, notice we're chrono boosting probes as well with any energy we've got. And we want to prioritize chrono boosting the natural because then they'll pop out here close to where they want to mine from. Next up, you drop a robotics. Keep building stalkers on the gateway. Notice guys, check it out. Robo, control group four, gateway, control group five. Do not copy these control groups. I am using the core. I'm using a very advanced customized hotkey setup and these don't actually correspond to their specific numbers i'm going to talk you guys through the important thing is add to whatever your control group is for that setup okay now after that you want to grab and grab two more gateways here now i in my build order had a big question mark on what supply but that's going to be about 33 34 supply i think is when we want to put those gateways down okay guys so we're doing a three gate robo opening here um and guys Early on, you want to try and chrono your Nexi a few times here, at least two times on this natural. So it's when, you, when your pylon first finishes, chrono the main, and once your natural finishes, chrono it two times consecutively. After that, you want to go to your standard rules of chrono boosting. So what's the standard rule of chrono boost? Chrono boost tech units and upgrades, and that's it. If you're focusing on chrono boosting probes because you're very economy focused, you can do that. But it's kind of a strategic um, thing. What did I just do? It's a strategic choice. So guys, we're doing a lot of time explaining. It's totally fine if we lose, right? First games, you should not be wanting to win your first games on the ladder. Take a moment and focus on what you're doing, okay? Remember, just, just focus on that. So what are we doing, guys? Oh, after those gateways, we're meant to build a pylon. So I'm gonna build a few pylons and we're just trying to build them spread out so they give us lots of production space around them. And then I'm gonna use shift. So what do they do there? Just to show you guys again, build, pylon shift build pylon and then i right click to get rid of the pylon notice right clicking gets rid of it and then i shift right click back so that's one of the things where if you go left click it places it right click will remove the building that you're trying to place okay cute little mechanic there so you send your observer over and you always just want to kind of set that up outside their base guys so i'm going to set that up here on pervert mode and i go oh yeah you've got an expansion you're building some zealots we don't really care all right, so after you've gone for your robo, you want to go for a twilight. Keep building probes for a little bit. And you want to build some immortals. Um, you also normally want to have three stalkers out. So I made a mistake. By the time warp gate finished, I should have had three stalkers built. And then you want to warp in three more stalkers. So you should have six stalkers at about four minutes 30. We're about a minute late and a stalker down. That's okay. As your natural gets above 16 workers, or just, just, just before 16, you want to take these two gases. And we can even, notice we're oversaturated, guys. We don't actually need any more workers. We can grab three, grab three. <gasps> Voila, we are at 44 workers. That's perfect two base saturation. 16 on minerals, 16 on minerals, three on every gas. Beautiful. Now the twilight's finished, we want to make charge. We want to chrono boost that. We want to make an immortal, chrono boost that. So by default, Whenever you're building upgrades or immortals, tech units, just chrono them. People are like, what should I chrono? What's the rule? There's no macro cycle really for Protoss. I mean, there is a little bit, but not as much. And what's this? What am I doing? Guys, place your gateways properly or I will absolutely kick you out of my, 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 my adoption, okay? I, I am sick of this. What is this? What is that? Don't you effing dare. A single pylon can fit about a billion gateways on it. Now, the important thing is you want there to be no space between the pylon and the gateway. So if I do it there, that's really bad. Now, why is that really bad? Because I can't fit one below it. I can't fit one above it. But if you put it right up against it, oh my God. Look at how many gateways I just fit on a single pylon. And I'm not even using up half of this area. Oh. And, and if you can make a habit of that, not only will you be faster at doing it, but the number of players I see who are only at about four or five gateways and they've run out of space. They have no positioning at all. They have no no space and they're like, oh, 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 what do I do? It's terrible. So what do we do, guys? We queue up a lot of gateways. We're gonna control click the gateways. So what do we do? Control plus left click selects all of the unit type. We're gonna add those to our gateway key, hotkey on number five. 
We do not use the built-in hotkey, that's for noobs. You guys are not going to be noobs by the end of this series. And because all these gateways are about to G up our production a lot, we're going to get supply blocks. So you also build pylons and conveniently we take our Artosis pylon and we give him a Tasteless, a Rotterdam, a Maynard, a Zombie Grub and a Fear Dragon. All to make sure Artosis isn't going to get depowered, okay? And at this point, guys, your production's starting to ramp up. And let's warp in some Zealots here. Whoa! How'd you warp that in so fast? That's rapid fire warp ins. We'll show you guys in just a minute. And what do we need to push out, guys? We need a warp prism, because that's like a forward pylon, essentially. So I did a warp in. What do I do? Let's just build some more pylons here. And uh, let's go kill our opponent. How about we go do that, guys? We can look at our observer. It doesn't look like our opponent's done too much, so that's good. And uh, we can do one more Zealot Warp in here while we're waiting. Now notice, what do they do, guys? When I warp in, I control click, add to my army group. So shift two, control click the Zealots, shift two. Um, warp Prism, control three. So what are we doing? We're gonna go to a staging point. So what do we do, guys? We aim move our army to about three quarters of the way across the map. And now I'm also right clicking the Prism there and I'm going shift phasing mode. Hands off the keyboard, check it out, guys. So not only will my army defend itself if it runs into stuff there, but that war prism, that is automatically going to set up. And when you get to the front, what do you do? You look at your gas and you say it's Archon time. How much do Archons cost? 300 gas each. Now, normally you're not going to have this much money, but normally you think, oh, I've got 900 gas, I can make three Archons, right? Um, oh, I've got how much gas I can make four Archons, and you just do them in pairs. In this case, we're being lazy and just going, I have 10 gateways, make five Archons, and let's go for it. Now, what we can do, let's practice that prism again. We want that to be a bit closer. So once again, right click, shift phasing mode. And what are we gonna do, guys? We're gonna do a really advanced maneuver here called attack move. Now, I do want us to learn a lot of micro as we go on, but this army here is a pretty basic attack moving army. The only thing we're gonna focus on here is we're going to warp some zealots in behind it. We're going to control click them, shift two to add them to our army, or shift one. And all I'm doing is moving in so all my shit gets in there and then attack moving again, okay? And my opponent, he's got some void rays. That's fine. Let's move up the ramp and then we're going to attack move again and we're going to just overwhelm there. So, what's the first thing you do before we get into the mechanics and everything that's a very basic rundown of the build and some things we're going to talk about that in more detail we're going to make it tighter but it's game one let's benchmark it and this is a habit we want to do every single game okay guys every single game so what do we do here we want to benchmark when our attack hits not when we arrive on the other side of the map and sit there for 30 seconds warping in not when we're inside the main base and they've already left it's when our attack hits them and that is this exact moment. And what is a benchmark? Well, a benchmark is where we write down, did we fucking do our job correctly? Number one, game timer. So let's let's do this, okay guys? Uh, where's me document at? Uh, oh, ooh, I've got my Google Drive open. I can't show you guys all my secret porn folders. Hold on a sec, let me close that first. There we go. <laughs> oh, that was worrisome. Oh, God, I got a little worried there, guys. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> um, hold on a second. Okay, so we got Chrono Boost notes there. We've got. Okay, so. Bench. Uh, benchmarks. Let's. Uh... Okay, guys. Game one. Uh, PvP Blackburn. Okay, so what, what was it? 9 minutes 47? And let's, let's do a some unit count. So first of all, check did I do my economy correctly, okay? So what are we doing, guys? We're going to check the unit tab. We can say, okay, I got 44 probes uh, and I have, do I have charge? I've got charge, 44 probes, I have charge and 10 gateways, okay? All right, let's write that down. 44 probes, 10 gates, charge, two base. Okay, so on the economy side, we have that. And then we want to look at our army count and we're going to go, okay, check if there's units warping in, we can kind of add that, okay? So what we can look at here is we can go, okay, I've got 20 zealots, right? But it's actually more than 20 if we count the ones that are warping in as well, right? Because there's 20 plus 10 more warping in. Okay, so we can say 20 zealots, five archons, two immortals, 10 more zealots warping in, okay? 20 zealots, two immortals, five archons, 10 more zealots warping in. And 
uh, warping in. And what was our supply? 143. Okay, cool. Um, 143 supply. Okay, awesome. So this is this is pretty nice. I mean, we can even say out of what? Well, out of 150? 143 out of 150 supply. There we have something to improve on. People always say, when should I hit this attack? When should I do this? When should I do that? What's the right time to hit? There is unlimited room to improve in StarCraft. And unless you are in Masters or GM, comparing yourself to a pro does not matter that much. What's more important for you is to compare against yourself. And this is uh, kind of the, the trick to improving at StarCraft. You can apply it to a lot of things that aren't StarCraft and you'll find it's really important. Don't be comparing yourself to random shit out there. Oh, there's because there's always someone better than you that can make you feel bad about it. You can use other people as motivation, but day to day, what you want to be focusing on is how can I put one foot in front of the other? How can I trust in the process, get the practice done? This is what you'll hear athletes and competitors in many different sports and uh, hobbies and different competitive activities all talk about, right? It's more about try to be internally focused, okay? Try to make sure you're just comparing yourself. So here we go. All right, let's try and... Okay, for now, short term, let's try and hit by nine minutes next time around. Maybe not the next game, but let's work our way towards nine minutes. Let's just, you know, try and try and get better. And of course, don't be simple about it. If you're hitting, oh, I hit it seven minutes, it was awesome. Uh, you only hit with one immortal and six zealots. Is that really an improvement? One immortal and six zealots, not the scariest attack, but just try to make sure you're improving your own shit and as long as you're, you're getting those reps in, you're gonna be improving naturally, okay? So we ran you through the very basic build order, guys. It's six Stalkers into Charge Lord Immortal Archon. We go ahead and attack off two base, and we're gonna take this opening, and we're gonna be able to plug this into a third base later on, um, into upgrades. We're gonna be able to add forges later on. We're gonna, similar to Terran, we can add a little bit of a modular approach here, where we could take this as a solid opening. We can turn this into a macro build, and. Uh, we're going to get better at scouting with our observer and all this stuff. But the fact that we have an early probe scout, we have an observer out of the map. I mean, this is fantastic, guys. It really gives us all the info we need. But for now, let's talk a little bit about those control groups, shall we? Okay, guys? So, the mechanics. If you guys want to have the right mechanics and play correctly, what's a camera location? How do I set up this? How do I set up that? Please click this link in the bottom of the Bronze to GM document. Bronze to GM document's in the YouTube description. If you guys are watching on YouTube, go there click on this and watch this 14 minutes first things first guys there i am up to and it's all chaptered down here um control groups keyboards mouse settings graphic settings in game all that stuff and then we've got hotkeys down there as well where i go through all the different hotkey customizations and different things you might want to do so it goes from about 14 to 36 minutes that's 22 minutes of video pretty succinct i don't want to repeat myself because it's just going to be boring for me and i'm probably going to miss things because <laughs> i'm i'm just going to do it crappily i was like oh i think i did a really good job explaining all that there what we are going to explain is something specific to protoss which is you guys would have noticed that i warped in with my units kind of like a magic wand right so what did you guys see whenever i warped in i wasn't even clicking right so notice all i had to do was select my gateways and then hold the zealot key down and they just warped in so that's using something called rapid fire. And I have every single gateway unit on a rapid fire key. Now, the way we do that, guys, is we go into hotkeys and we can make some settings. So I'm gonna go to a profile that doesn't have it. It's just a standard profile and I'll show you how to set it up from scratch. First things first, guys, go down here. So you go hotkeys, global. This is just a standard hotkey with zero changes. Unit management, scroll to the very bottom of unit management, choose ability or AI target, and that by default would actually have nothing there. It'd just say left mouse button. So this is literally your ability to left mouse button. Choose ability or AI target. What does that mean? What's this fancy tech language? That's your ability to click on things. This is literally, if you guys accidentally unbind this, you can't select things, you can't cast spells. So <laughs> choose ability or AI target. This is literally, you won't be able to click on things. So make sure you don't remove that all right or you're gonna go back in game and go why doesn't my mouse work um but you want to click on the alternate key and you want to just add z for zealot right now maybe you're using the core so it's a uh, or uh like like i am on my other hotkey profile or maybe you're using grid and it's a different key so just pick the zealot key there and then you're gonna to have to tab on out okay so how do we tab out guys so what you want to do is you want to go to your computer and you wanna to go to your folders. Now, you wanna go Documents, StarCraft 2. So basically just go to your Documents folder in Windows, StarCraft 2, and oh no, I have 400 accounts. 
So you go accounts. If you've only logged in with one account, it's really easy. Just make sure that you do select the actual name. Yeah, not the name. You have to go by accounts and then the number. So once you, you get in there, you're going to be able to tell if this is yours because there's a specific hotkey profile. So how do you tell? Well, when you go into that folder, you're going to see the names of these hotkeys. You can see I put little names in there so I can differentiate this from my other hotkey folders. So I've got a poop folder and a B2GM toss. Let me let me double check. Is this the right one in game? B2GM toss, poop, 14th September. Yep, that's that's correct. That's correct. That's the right one. So we've got a poop folder in there. It does this correct. Now, all you want to do is you want to double click bronze to jam toss and you want to basically just add all of the other keys for your gateway units in here, guys, which is pretty basic if you're not using any fancy keys. If you're using the core um, and you're using things like brackets and, and semicolons, you need to actually look up what those are because it might be like semicolon or something like that that you have to actually type or uh, might be like open parentheses or something. So if you guys are using any non-letter keys, it might be a little weird because you need to like look up actually what the, the wording is for that. But normally with a standard hotkey setup, well, what do we have on the gateway? Let's just let's just go take a look, guys. So if we've got a warp gate, right? Um, yeah, a warp gate, that's fine. Shows up here. Z, okay, E. So we want E for sentry, S for stalker, H for adept. Okay, awesome. Uh, so we can just go comma, E, comma s comma h comma t for high templar comma d for dark templar and that should be it right t d that's it that's it and then we can just go okay all right save save and that should work and that should work from there now of course if you guys want more info on that it doesn't work you're struggling with it of course you can always come to my twitch chat even if i'm offline you can go to my twitch chat and if you type exclamation mark rapid there are some lovely links. There is Jack Attack in detail explaining. These aren't my videos, these are his. How it works for rapid fire warp ins, and then also how to set up multiple hotkeys. So go have a check there, guys. Um, there's a point from Yak here. Uh, there's abilities that might double up on some of those keys, and you might not want them on rapid fire. So adding all the gateway units seems dangerous. Now I have a lot of abilities on rapid fire, but I never use the rapid fire. You've just got to keep in mind, right? So if you have is T also the Psy Storm key? So if you do what I just did, if you then hold the T key down, it's gonna, after just a fraction of holding that down, it's gonna be like, storm, 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 storm. And it's gonna use as many storms as you can. If you find that affects you negatively, you might wanna remove it, right? So you might be like, ooh, ooh, I don't, okay, I'm gonna take the T off of that, right? Um, maybe it's only Zealots and Stalkers that you're really warping in tons of right where you 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 want to be able to just hold the key down for zealot and stalker warp ins or zealot stalker adept right these units that are being massed a lot more maybe the high templar you don't need it but i personally never have that problem because every time i'm using spells i go spell click spell click spell click and i don't really have an issue with accidentally holding it down because i'm pretty disciplined with how i use my keyboard just something to keep aware for all of you guys so is that it? Is that all the mechanic stuff, Pig? Come on, you gotta give us something. Okay, let's talk about control groups, guys. My control groups are exactly the same as Terran. I use the exact same system for both races. So I've literally taken this from the Terran Bronze GM document and I've just changed the word the to box. like Nexus and Gateways from Command Centers and Barracks. So it's basically, and, and obviously these don't correspond, like I said, um, on the bottom display bar, but keep in mind, this is what they correspond to in terms of how easy they are for me to reach and use. Easiest key is my main army. Second easiest is my secondary army. That'll be an SCV scout early on in the game. Then we'll have a drop defense or drop or counter attack key, right? So what do I mean? What's that? So that's basically a squad that's separate from my army. It's either defending, say my main base from drops. That might be a group of stalkers in my main against a Terran who keeps trying to drop me there. Or it could be a pack of zealots I have waiting on the side of the map. So when my opponent moves out, I'm gonna run a move those into my opponent's mineral line. It's just a separate squad from one of my main fighting forces. Nexus on four, gateways on five. Why don't you use the warp gate hotkey? It's because you wanna produce using the same key for gateways and warp gates. There's a lot of messy situations where you cheese or you're being cheesed where warp gate does not get researched early on and it gets delayed quite a bit. That combined with the fact that you wanna use the same key at both stages and you want to not be manually clicking a gateway to produce 
you should just put your gateways on a control group. Some people hate that. They don't want to do it. That's fine. You do whatever the hell you feel like in that regard. Um, if you don't want to do it, this is the better way. Every single pro gamer manually controls group control groups their gateways. I would say you should do it. If you don't do it, it's not going to absolutely kill you. It just means you're going to be a bit shittier at your production in the very early stage of the game. It's probably not the end of the world. Number six, we have Robos and Stargates. Okay, some people might want to put their gateways on the same key as their Robos and Stargates. Exactly the same as with Terran. I like to split my barracks from my factories and starports. Some people tab between them all. I don't like to, especially with Protoss. I like my warp in key to be super just hit Hi, that. My friend and I got into SC lately and have been watching your videos. Love your content and appreciate your teaching style. Oh, shit. Just wanted to show some appreciation. Thank you so much, my friend. And you subbed as well. Thank you, good old Jimmy. Thank you so much for the $10 tip, my friend. Really appreciate the love. Thank you for going above and beyond, my dude. Um, and welcome to the pigsty. Uh, to you and you and your mate. Um, thank you, Kit Pirk, with the tier one sub as well. Welcome to the pigsty. Thank you so much, guys. Really appreciate the love. So you could absolutely put these all on one hotkey and just tab between them. I just really like the gateways on a key, the Robers and the Stargates on a separate key. Um, that way I only have to tab once for Robos and Stargates. And what I find is usually I am only producing out of one of these at a time. I'm very rarely producing air units and Robo units at the same time. It's usually one or the other for me most of the time. So that just makes it really easy. I like that. And I also use the tiny side mouse buttons to tab forwards and back. These are these left mouse buttons, these two. All right, so we've got Forges and Cyber Cores I put box. on number nine, and then I have a dumping key equivalency on tilde. I show how to set that up in the other um, in the other mechanics section as well, guys. So if you want more info on that, basically it's just a key that I set up to have a single button. So I can select a few stalkers, say, that I want to remove from my control group or DT. Say I've got some DTs in my army, I wanna send them off to harass. I don't really want them on a control group. I'll just hit this button. It'll put them on control group zero, but I'm never gonna select control group zero. It's just a convenient way of using that steel mechanic to remove them from the keys. And of course, we're always gonna be using the steel mechanics. I absolutely advise guys, if you have any mechanical questions at this point and you haven't watched the video, scroll the heck up, watch the video. Trust me, it answers all these questions. Anything that's not answered in there, I will try to answer as best I can, but that's about it guys, really clean. Um, mechanics, simple setup. Make sure you make a setup that makes logical sense for you. If you wanna do something a little different to this, that's totally fine. Everybody has their own kind of system they like to set up. And um, yeah, maybe six is too hard, hard for you to reach on the keyboard. Maybe you set up W as a custom control group or something like that. We talk about how you can set up, you know, caps lock as a select all army. You could use W as a custom hotkey setup. I talk about all of that in the other bronze to GM for Terran as well. And like I said, exact same system. It was a bit of a change when I started learning Protoss and Terran with the core setup that I use. But once I, I just used the same system for both and, and once I'd applied that, everything felt pretty darn good. So uh, of course the core is an advanced hotkey setup. I don't advise it for beginners at all. But if you are a hardcore programmer, musician, someone who's a bit of a lifelong learner, you can go ahead. There's information in the BDGM doc as well. So thanks for hanging out guys. Uh, we've already showed you guys one game, which was a pretty clean and simple win. We're gonna go into another game in a moment and we're gonna see if we can keep winning with this. Do you have any advice on how to easily recall to a specific nexus, says Siege? Oh, no, not at all. Okay, cool, guys. We got an opponent who's 12.59, so no worries. Um, bad luck to Annabelle there. We can take him down. Uh, basically, I you can either do parting hotkeys or you can do it like me. So for recalling, what I do is I just camera jump, select the nexus, click on the mini map to jump back to my army and then recall them. Um, I used to think it was really hard. I've practiced it enough that I do it pretty friggin' quickly. If I'm in a panic and it's just to just, just evacuate, just recall home, then I'll obviously just select my Nexus key and just hit it on the army. Cause it's not about a particular base I'm going to, it's just get out of the, the trouble that we're in, right? So um, yeah. Parting, it's funny because Parting has hotkeys. He's the best recaller where he puts his three Nexi or four Nexi on different control groups but then he actually also manually produces out of each separate key. It's one of the most awkward things I've ever seen and it's kind of cute. All right, guys, so we're playing a Protoss versus Protoss. Doesn't really matter what matchup you're playing. 
because it's all about developing systems early on for getting our units built so that we're just kind of doing the basics without having to think too much about it. And then we can start focusing on the strategy a little bit more. So guys, first thing, build a probe, add that to our control group, that nexus. So control group of that, of course, control four. And we're gonna rally that down to our expansion. And then as soon as that probe pops, what do we do? Change the rally point back, okay? Now this guy, notice we're putting him on our main army group. We're gonna build a pylon. We just want those power fields to just touch the edge. That's how you line that up, okay guys? And then we wanna send it back to mining. We wanna build some more. You know what? Actually, if this is easier for you guys, you can just leave it here. You can tell it to mine five minerals and then go back. It's up to you. But just make sure we queue extra probes. Remember, as that pylon finishes, we want to chrono boost. And then we jump over here. We're gonna build the gateway. Add the gateway to our control group, so control five, and then go back up in the main. Keep queuing up probes, and remember, 16 gate, 17 gas, okay? So keep queuing up probes here, and oh, that guy's meant to scout after building the gateway, guys. So let's take this guy. We should have said build gateway, and then go there. So what do we do? We always queue our scout to go a big circle around the mineral line. This way, we make sure we don't run through the mineral line and get killed by their workers, okay? And then we hide back behind the natural all right now people are already asking why do we put the expansion here it's so that we don't die to zerg rushes and it just gets us used to building a wall off and we'll change that as we get higher level we'll adjust it all right guys so we are already pretty high on money so remember we take a worker down here our 19th worker and we want to build a nexus and then a cyber core and the way you want to do this is we want to leave a single space opening okay so that we leave the opening and then we can fill in the wall with a third structure later, okay? Once you put the Nexus and the Cyber Core down, you want to resume building probes. So we've queued up two more probes. You want to build a gas, 21, and 22, we want to build a second pylon, okay? So we can already build that second pylon right now. And it's really good to just build that somewhere where you've got lots of production space. So let's build it right out there, make our life easy, and then queue that back. Now, you can see my opponent here, is going to be chasing my probe which is really annoying oh no he's going to kill it and what do we see we see a few gateways cyber core a forge we'll try and hide there again but otherwise if he dies he dies we don't care we're not going to pay attention now remember when you when that finishes what do we do guys we go chrono chrono on stalker and warp gate we can set that rally point just inside our wall and check it out guys 16 workers three three time to make sure that's added to our nexus control group center it, remake the camera location, and then set the rally point. Okay, what are we talking about, guys? If you make a camera location, so let's go third base camera location, fourth base camera location, fifth base. So what is that? Control F3 to make that one. Control F4 to make this one. Control F5. And also Control F6, because we always make our rally point or our frontal warp in point that. Now, what you're gonna notice is this is perfectly centered. This is perfectly centered. Third base, that's actually not. You might not be able to realize I'm pretty good at centering it. You're gonna notice I hold down my middle mouse button and I do this little drag scroll to adjust it. But you can see we're a little to the right. And our fifth base, this one's also just slightly off. There's no way to perfectly center a camera location until you've actually built the Nexus. Which is why our first one, what, how did I create that camera location? What I did is I added my Nexus to my key. And then by double tapping that key, it zooms me to it, my control group, right? So control group four, in this case, it shows up as seven here. So by double tapping that key, it centers, and then I go control F1. Same thing down here. I add this to the control group. I set the rally point. Keep up some probes now, why not? And then we double tap the camera location, control F2. And the other ones, three, four, five, well, we can't center those until we actually build a base there, okay? Now, obviously, we haven't built anything for a while. This is not the way the build's meant to go because I was taking some time to build that mechanic, to do that. So let's remember, guys, what do we do? We go Robo. After the Robo, we want to go three more, uh, two more gateways to get up to three gates. So notice, always try to build them in that nice little grid. And let's just build some extra pylons around so that we don't get supply blocked. We can build like another pylon down there. There we go, no worries. So what did I do, guys? Control click the gateways. Shift five. Now, obviously, these keys correspond to whatever. I'm just going to tell. I'm just going to say the keys that are down here, even though you guys probably don't want to use those. What do they do there? Control four. That's the Robo Stargate key. Okay. We can warp in a stalker, box it, or control click it. Shift two into our army. Okay. Let's keep building probes here and have a good time. 
Uh, Bully is pointing out, I might have misspoke, guys. When you want it to center, you're double tapping the control group, not the camera location, to center it. So by double tapping seven, that's what's centering me there. Double tapping seven is centering me there. Funny point, if I put another nexus next to it and then add it to the control group, it's going to center in between them both, but that's not a very realistic scenario, is it? <laughs> so anyways, guys, um, yeah, all right, let's continue with the build. So obviously you want to keep queuing up probes regularly. This is something preferably you never have any probe downtime. And when this base is almost done, you do want to take both gases when that's almost full. So what do they do, guys? Try that again. I box a worker, I go build gas, shift build gas, right click, and then right click. Because remember, the right click removes the structure. I've seen a lot of players when they're starting out, they do this. And then they're like, so, so they're like, and they're like, why won't it work? They just click once. The first click is just removing that template. You right click to remove it and then you shift right click to get back to the minerals. Okay, make sure you do that. Always build an observer, send it to the other side of the map. We can either rally it across or if you have trouble forgetting the rally, we can just rally it at home. And remember, you always want to warp in three more stalkers when your gateways are ready. So you have six stalkers ready as your early defense, all right? Now you want to put guys on gas. How do we do that? We can go three workers or you can do click, hold down, shift, click three probes and do it. Another way we could do this, guys, is if we box too many workers, we can go like that and then we can hold down shift and we can go left click, left click, left click, and then right click the remaining back. Talk you guys through that mechanic again. So let's warp in three more stalkers, guys, and go, oh my god, what's he doing? What are we going to do, guys? We're just going to move in and move in and move. So, opponent was a bit of a dickhead there. If your opponent's showing harassment there, we can put down a shield battery just to be nice and safe. Put down another shield battery there. But what's more important right now is continuing our build order. Don't get distracted, okay, guys? So we're just going to leave these guys in a central position where they can respond. We're going to move our observer across the map. So what's next in the build, guys? It's Twilight Council, and then it's like six or seven more gateways, depending on what you prefer. We're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we're gonna go, what are we doing after that? So we've queued all that up. We're then going, open up the advanced structure tab. Can't make a Templar archives until the Twilight Council is done. So let's just build some regular pylons to reinforce these. Control click the gateways, ignore the attack that's going on. Add to number five. Okay. Oh, he's being a cheeky dickhead, Inny. Inny. So we're building some more pylons, and now let's move over here with our stalkers, guys. Now remember, what's our micro? Really advanced here. If you feel you have enough units to win a fight, you want to do what we call aggressive stutter step, and that's where you move into range of your opponent's units, and then you attack move, so everything doesn't get stuck behind each other. He's going to run away. Some cute little harassment from my opponent. So, what did he kill, guys? The Robo. So let's rebuild the Robo. Also, Twilight Council's done. So we want to build the Templar Archives. So, cancel. That would have been better, guys, if we just did it this way, right? Now, a lot of people get confused there with holding Thanks down the shift. Box. They start holding down shift straight away, and they go, Oh, why can't I? I'm trying to swap to Templar Archives. Let go of shift. Open the, the menu, get the Templar Archives, and then hold down shift before you click it, and then you can shift click back to the base. Let's start charge as well. Our opponent's trying to run stalkers into our base. This is super high level Starcraft right here. And uh, what are we doing, guys? We're chrono boosting charge. We're going to make some immortals normally. Well, you know what? We could skip the immortals this time around because our opponent has mostly made void rays, zealots, but more importantly, it's kind of late, right? We've already got lots of money. We want to go fight our opponent. So let's warp in zealots, box them or control group them, add to group number two, and move those guys around, right? We say, let's select something else, select the main army, you see they're selected. So we want to build a warp prism first of all, because that's going to allow us to warp in on the front. Remember, the warp prism is what allows you to really kick ass when you're attacking your opponent. Now, normally, remember, we stop at 45 probes. I'm only at 36, so we can definitely rebuild a few probes here, because we did take some damage. We can warp in more zealots. And as this prism comes out, what are we going to do, guys? We're going to add that to control group three. And we're going to move across the map. So we're going to attack from over here. And we're once again, right click, shift phasing mode. Okay, so that warp prism is told to go there. And our ground army is also told to go there. But wait, what's this? 
So notice we're just A moving our army back. And what am I going to do, guys? We're going to warp in some extra zealots. But oh, I'm supply blocked. Oh, no. So what are we doing? What was that? Guys, if you ever get supply blocked as Protoss, grab a probe and just go build pylons. Especially if you have a lot of money, just build so many pylons. And we now see, oh, there's Void Rays here. So what are we going to do? Select army, attack move. Okay. And if we want to be super fancy, we move forward. And then we attack move again. Now, it's easy in this situation to just sit at home and be like, ah, but let's just go across the map and do our attack, okay? If we want to be really fancy, we would split some units off right now because our opponent clearly has pylons here somewhere. They're warping it off. But for now, guys, what are we doing? Same thing we always do. We warp in these guys, as many Archons as we can. We shift, add to our army. Our pylon is under attack. We go, oh no, it's Void Rays, Void Rays! It doesn't matter, guys. We're going to kill him. Two Void Rays, about five Stalkers, should handle that pretty easily. We're just going to wait for our Warping to be ready to do that. But in the meantime, what are we doing, guys? We're moving in and we're attack moving our giant ass army to try and kill our opponent. Doesn't seem like our opponent has that much. We can look at home now. And we're going to warp in one big wave of Stalkers. And what we're going to do is we're just going to right-click those on the Void Rays. We don't want these guys on our army key. They can just stay there defending. Okay, guys? Notice we didn't add them to our control group. So those Void Rays do their thing. We're going to keep focusing on our army on the front. And we're looking. Looks like everything's fighting pretty well, so I don't see a need to move anything in. And that's all I'm doing, guys, is I'm monitoring my army and saying, hey, is there a lot of stuff stuck behind each other? Oh, look, now there is. Okay, let's move those guys in. And you know what, guys? We already killed all the probes. Just killing the Nexus. It's, it's decent, but it's always better to go for the heart of your opponent. My opponent has some Silver League cannons there, just kind of placed out on the corners of their... Mineral line, normally you just want one in the base, or if you want to zone out drops, you want them on the edge of your base to actually zone out a prism or an air unit flying in there. Hey Sam, thanks for the raid, mate. Thank you um, guys for the subs as well. Big thank you for that. So guys, there's probably bases, so we're just going to queue these guys to attack around the left. We're going to take a few zealots, queue those to attack around the right. And what are we going to do? Well, okay, apparently our units are very stupid. Never mind, move down. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, we're just going to give you guys some thank yous in a moment, but my app seems to be broken. One second. All right, once we clear that up, probably not defeated. So we're going to attack everything around there, and then we're just going to take some of these guys. I'm going to press my dumping key. Notice these guys got dumped onto zero, and we're going to send those that way. You can see my opponent is trying to build a massive defense over here. Holy crap. I mean, we kind of knew it, but still a little impressed. <laughs> Just at how much shit they have. Wow. Now, because they're not actually harassing me anymore, we could also take these stalkers and send those up from the left side of the map. So notice we've gone... What did we just do, guys? We're using the minimap. You can give orders on the minimap for those who don't know. So you go A move, shift, A move, shift, A move, shift, A move. And all that is is A, left click, shift, A, and then just hold down shift, A, left click, A, left click, A, left click, and then release shift. And those stalkers, you can see their waypoints. They're going to go attack there, there, there. And notice I click them in each of the bases. So that'll get the job done. And these guys, I just previously did the same thing. You can see they've scouted all around here. So I know there's no bases on the right side of the map. So those guys can just attack to the top left corner and join in with that. Now notice we're floating money. We're not expanding. There's people like, you need to do more. You need to do more. You do not need to do more. You can improve very slowly and steadily at StarCraft. The important thing is for you to always have organized urgency. So if you find yourself moving your mouse cursor like this, and then build a pylon. Build a pylon. Okay, okay, you can get a bit more uh, urgency, right? Fucking click some stuff, okay? But... If, on the other hand, you fall into the factor of which most players do, and what is what is the direction most players fall? Oh, I gotta do things! I gotta do things! Ah, ah, um, 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 ah, ah! Then you need organization, okay? And what that means is come up with a play for that point in the game where you panicked and you got excited and you didn't know what was going on. You say, okay, so once my first attack's happening, and if it's either dying out or I've decided there's not much more to be gained from it, let's remember to transfer workers from my main to my natural if it needs it. And let's remember to build a third base on uh, my third and also a fourth base. And I'm also going to go double forge. 
Uh, and I'm also gonna make blink if they have air units to counter air units. And that's like that's that's your set. Let's let's not even blink. Screw the blink one. Just double forge two bases, and I'm gonna hold the probe key down, and we're gonna we're gonna rally these probes over, and then we're gonna add to control group center the third, add to control group center the fourth. Remember, so what are we doing there, guys? We added to control group, so we went box it, shift seven, double tap seven, control F3. We went. At, grab this, so click on it. Shift seven, double tap seven, control F4. And then we select seven, the and we rally box. all the bases to this third base. And then when it gets full of workers, we're gonna select all of the Nexus and rally them all to this base. And that way we can just saturate one base at a time. If we want, we can check in on our work account on the top right. Our work account sucks, but it's a, it's a win, and a win is a win. So anything I didn't explain there or didn't make any sense, guys, let me know as always, and I'll do my best to explain it as we go. Um, my stream label's broken, so I can't actually see the alerts. Uh, we got bronze one already, fantastic. Of course, bronze and silver are reasonably small leagues. If you're winning all your games, you will improve very, very quickly. Cool. So I think what we really, want to look for there and it's all written out in the notes already guys is there's one main well two main things we're looking for and i guess i will mention it very quickly so the cute thing is um basically if we don't see an expansion at three minutes 30 which is why i keep trying to leave my probe alive but i think because i'm a protoss player everyone's like really afraid of my probes so they're they're kind of chasing it and killing it every game so i think i think because people are being cannon rushed too much so they've seen too many cannon rushes so you guys remember build the pylon mine minerals and then queue back to the front to build the gateway keep building probes so um basically if they don't have an expansion at 3 30 we're going to double down on unit production we're going to make immortals and drop a shield battery while we scout and try to figure out what's happening the other thing is if our opponent's actually doing an early pool or a proxy then that's gonna actually get us to react. For now, guys, we're just gonna once again scout the main and then hide behind the expansion, okay? Behind that, we'll get the gas. Oh, we forgot to do the chrono boost, so we're gonna chrono boost. And remember, you wanna queue right up to 20 probes. 20 probes, guys. So notice when you got 16 on minerals, we rally to the gas, and then we rally one to the gas, and the next one rallies down there to build the nexus. So I double tap my hotkey, control F1 for camera location, control F2, control F3, Control F4 and Control F5. Now remember, one's on gas, so we rally down there. And the moment a probe rallies to something that's not a resource, you always rally back. And this guy goes on Control 2. So Control 1, double tap, Control 2. So Scout on 1, Builder on 2. Nice little system to set up for the early game. We'll override those keys later. Now you build the Nexus. Remember, there's no probes building right now because we always pause on 20 supply. So it's after the gateway, we non-stop build probes. Then we go Nexus, Cybercore. We then rally back up into the main, and that's when we resume probe production. 21 supply, we go second gas. We then queue up another probe, and then we build a second pylon, okay? Which should be normally on 22 supply. Once again, our opponent. <laughs> and I'll just build it there this time. Not as much production space, but that's okay. Our opponent has once again killed our probe. This mother trucker, guys. This mother trucker is being cannon rushed before and does not want it to happen again and is removing our scouting. Um, but basically, the thing is also, if there weren't buildings in their base, we, we would know that we're being proxied. So let's build a stalker, build a warp gate, chrono boost. And remember, this scouting is not really important. We're just getting in the habit of it. We're still building our very base skill. So worrying about scouting is the worst thing you can do when you're starting out. Um, if you die to a very early void ray, something hits you or a marine rush at, at three minutes, and you go, how do I stop that? You're asking the wrong questions. Until you're in gold league, guys, you actually don't need to know how to respond to those. And that's why I'm not addressing it just yet. We're scouting, we're getting used to it. I'm gonna talk about it very soon in just a couple of games, but I really wanna hit home that you guys need to get used to the build order first and foremost. Okay, so guys, Stalker, Warp Gate. Remember we go Robo, and then what do we do next? Right after the Robo, 33 supply, we wanna go double gate, okay? Guys in the chat, remind me to add that to the build order after this game, please, okay? After those, we want to build an extra pylon to make sure we don't get supply blocked. I've control grouped the gateways, shift five. I selected my robo, shift four. So notice I can double tap forward, it'll even take me to the robo. Now keep building probes, guys. Don't stop building probes. I'll throw that second chrono boost into the natural. Remember when the natural finished, 
one chrono boost, then we'll put another in it. And from then on, it's just going to be default chrono usage. If you're taking a third and chronoing probes, you'll, you know, you, you might keep building stuff. Um, let's build that third stalker, because remember, it's three stalkers and then warping in three more after that. Get wrecked. Get wrecked, silly zealot. Don't get distracted, guys. <laughs> Don't get distracted. It's so easy to get distracted in Starcraft, man. <laughs> Build a few more pylons just to make sure we don't get supply blocked. And remember, what do we do, guys? We always make an observer out of that robo so we can see what's going on, okay? So we've got three gateways at this point. And when this stalker finishes, that's going to transform into a warp gate. And we want to warp in three more stalkers. Remember what we said? We want to have six stalkers at four minutes 30. So let's box these stalkers, add them to our army group. Oh, our natural's almost full. So what do we do, guys? Build the gases, okay? And we warp in those three stalkers. We... Box them, shift two. We can also chrono boost an immortal, change that rally point back. And what are we gonna do, guys? Main army is on one, observer on two now. Remember, scout on number two or one. So army one, observer two. And what am I gonna do? I'm just gonna tell that to move and sit out front of space. We can look at it later. In the meantime, let's start charge. Let's keep building probes here. You can see we've paused probes a few times this game. That's pretty sloppy. You wanna always just be adding probes. So about every 25 seconds, guys, you wanna queue up two probes for each nexus. That's something we can kind of build. It's like a bit of a subconscious cycle, okay? Let's put guys on gas. And we can look at this and we can say, I'm at 12 out of 16. I need four more probes. And you can see I've got four more queued, which means that's going to take us to as many workers as we'll ever need. Now, at this point, people say, okay, so do I keep building immortals and stalkers? No. This is where we introduce a concept called powering. As a Protoss player, you only want to build units either when you have preset timings to build them. In this case, we go six Stalkers and Immortal always. We never build other units, okay? Never, never, never. There's already people in chat that... Oh, what, what if there's an Oracle? Why aren't your Stalkers in your Mineral Line? What if, 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 what if? If a Stalker comes in, guys, we'll A-move out. If an Oracle comes in, we'll A-move up there. Units could come in the front, and then our Stalkers are in the wrong position. Don't stress over the thousand things that can go wrong. We're learning the basics of a build order. So how many how many extra gateways do we build? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're gonna go seven extra gateways. Control click, add them to our, our key. We get the Templar archives up next, remember? And then what do we do after that to make sure we can handle the crazy amount of production we're about to have? We queue up lots and lots of, of pylons, okay? Lots and lots. No, these are great questions. I'm making fun of you guys in chat, but please keep asking. These are really good things for me to think about. Um. The, the trick is, people are saying, like, what if an oracle, what if this or that? Guys, as you get better, you'd actually scout with your probe and your observer to see what's going on, right? So as I'd get better, I'd... I'd oh, he's got a Stargate? Okay. Uh, we could put a shield battery down in each mineral line would be a thing. I can't really put one in my natural. I could put it there, maybe. Maybe I can dump these guys off. Or I could put them on, on number... On my drop defense key, actually. That's my drop defense key. It shows up as number one. I'll put them in my main. Then these guys get... You know, you, we can react like that as we need to, Okay. Anyway, in the meantime, we should have built another immortal. We forgot to, but we we're busy talking. So we'll build a warp prism and we'll start making zealots 10 at a time. So remember guys, control click, shift one into our army. Um, but yeah, we can we can always look around a lot, right? With our observer and we can get better at this as we go on. So right now we see lots of cannons. We see a wall off. We see some units building. We don't really see any big signs of anything, but we can do something advanced. Let's check up there, there and over here. And then go back to the front. So what are we doing? We're just checking to see if he's taken other bases. That's about it. Let's build some more zealots. And remember, guys, after you build units, what do we do? Lots of pylons, because we are mass producing. Now, oh, it wasn't an oracle. So what are we doing? Control click. Shift one. We're going to take the warp prism, put that on control group two now. So it's stolen the observer's key by going control two. And what are we doing, guys? We're going to go to the staging point over across the map. Right click the prism, shift, warp in. Okay. And while we're going, you can do something fancy. We can grab these guys, control click, move them across the map, shift one. And by the time the prism gets there, we still should be able to make the archons. Because see how quick the warp, warp gate cooldown is? So even, And those zealots are really fast. You wouldn't want to warp in archons at home because they could get trapped behind your wall. They can't fit through there. And they're very slow. But look at this. By the time it sieges up, that timed out perfectly to warp in all these Archons. And you always want to warp in those Archons on the other side of the map if you can. It's just like, that's your gas has been building this whole time for this big wave of that. And we're going to move that prism up nice and close. And we're going to move in. And once again, guys... A move! All right. And oh, he's left an opening in his wall so my Zealots can get in. So check this out, guys. Notice they're stuck. If I move those guys in... 
can get even more surface area there. Now, I could also move these guys in so they attack the other units rather than just the gateways. So notice I just kind of move them in. And we'll just click that pile on there, maybe just move that. Now, if you guys ever see this ability, that's shield battery overcharge. We haven't talked about that yet, but if you see your opponent doing that, click on it as quickly as possible. Try to kill it. <laughs> Pig, can you explain the stealing mechanic again? Um, I explained it in detail in the Terran Bronze to GM. Essentially, the stealing mechanic means that, say I've got an army. If I use control group stealing rather than regular control grouping... Oh, what's this? Oh, hello. I was not watching. Alright guys, let's use that battery overcharge. So what are we doing? We're going to move the stalkers there. We're going to use battery overcharge. And we're going to tell it to heal our nexus. Still ended up dying. This guy's a cheeky bugger, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Did he proxy these void rays? I don't know. Cheeky bugger, man. Cheeky. We'll rebuild that nexus there. Um, so basically, if, if you've got an army, I can take this guy, and if I steal him onto my drop defense key, notice that went from 34 units to 33. If I take all these guys, add them to my drop defense, so I'm, sh I'm shift stealing, notice they're taken off the other key. So I can move my main army around separately from the other army now. I can add these guys to that drop defense as well, and these guys can all group up and join forces and go after these void rays. Now notice, if I attack move here, we can tell they're going to get stuck there. So you, right, remember guys, watch the micro, move in there, but he's going to come around the other side. So we're going to move in, move underneath, move underneath, and do -do 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 -do. shoot, move, shoot, move. So we can try to chase him down there. Anyway, looks like he's once again building bases elsewhere guys so what did i do i a moved the whole army there on the left side shift click and then i boxed the other half and gave them a different order to check the other side back at home he's back in our main all right let's go back up there back up there with the stalkers the archons are trying to get in range here stalkers are trying to trying to get up here let's move underneath <laughs> now i haven't talked about the uh idle worker key at all have i guys but you can control click on that idle worker button if you unbind that key. And then you can tell them all to do something. In this case, we could go return cargo. And I think that'll put them all back to work because they all seem to have resources in their hands. And you can see our opponent here being very cheeky. Very, very cheeky up here with their base. And we're going to take these guys and bring them up there. I don't actually have any anti-air over there. So I do kind of need to bring my stalkers over. And um, he's trying to come in over here again. But if he doesn't defend his buildings, he will lose the game. So we're just going to move in and kill it all. What's up? How are you quick casting multiple gateway units? I thought you'd only be able to assign one. I explained that at the start. If you just go back, I explained it about 20 minutes ago. And we defeated him because that was my opponent's last building that died. So we did manage to get the win. GG, well played. Is the warp gate cooldown the same no matter which unit you warp in? I think it's a little different, different between the units. I'm actually not sure. Yeah. So the thing is, right? So th there's all these little details like, why not just leave your stalkers standing in the main mineral line? And that was absolutely correct. I think it was Kabuki who was asking. Like, you're absolutely right. That why not leave half the stalkers in the main? But it's one of these things where it kind of is like there's meta decisions that happen in StarCraft. So what do I mean by that? Guys, if there's a lot of people running oracles into your bases, you're naturally going to probably start leaving your stalkers in your main mineral line, right? Half of them and then the other half in the natural mineral line because it's happening a lot. But on the other hand, if there's lots of people who are coming in with a ton of zealots and surprising you, you're probably going to have all your army at the front by default. Now, as we go higher level, we can make adjustments um, to do you know all sorts of different things. But what we'll notice, and, and I want to I point this out, is what matters more than anything else is timing and learning to scout and adjust. And this is something we can't learn too early as a Protoss player. If we build our Robo on time, make an Observer immediately and send that across, we can, we, up to probably Platinum League, we'll usually scout that they've gone to Stargate and maybe even see the Oracle before it gets to our base. Now, how is that the case? It's because people don't play past good build orders up until you're much higher level, right? The build orders aren't efficient. So if you start off with a good build order, my robo here is already about 30, 40 seconds later than it could be because I'm spending so much time explaining. And yet I still had an observer over there well before my opponent had any tech out. So 
the important thing is if you start worrying about an Oracle or Dark Templar or that or this or the other, you're going to basically be the equivalent of you are at this moment a baby. If you're in Bronze League or in Silver League, you are a baby. You are you don't know how to crawl yet. You're on your back. You're you're about you're, you're kind of like you're able to shift your body a little bit. But if if you're worried about what sort of punching technique another baby that you're fighting is using against you, you're kind of on the wrong track. Do you want to figure out how to use basic coordination skills to like pick up a block or how to crawl around first of all? That's more important than worrying about what strategy the opponent's using because your real strength here is growth. You are developing at an incredible rate and you can get so much better at just building army and building all your units up and all that sort of stuff. And um, it just makes such a huge difference. Um, so let the other baby punch you? Yes, because if you've ever seen a baby punch another baby, it's like, ugh. And that's kind of the same thing with worrying about when things are gonna hit you and so on. So the real, the real thing is, as we get more automatic with our build order and it becomes better and we hit it tighter and tighter, what are we naturally gonna focus on, guys? We are naturally gonna have more mental ability and APM and attention to start scouting and reacting to things. And we'll get there, okay? So guys, build a probe, rally it back to the minerals. We'll rally it over here because those guys don't have too many friends. We're gonna build a pylon and then we're just gonna mine five minerals and then wait. And let's set up our camera locations, guys. So keep building probes. That's gonna be double tap, seven, control F1, left control F2, control F3, control F4, Control F5, and then here. All right, the pylon's finished, so we want a chrono. We want to build a gateway and go for a scout. We'll give him some more orders in a little bit. For now, we're just clicking him across the map. And I'll actually, see, I just rallied that guy there and then changed the rally point back to the minerals. That's like a cute little thing if you like to do that. And we're just going to keep building probes here, and now we rally to the gas. Okay, so now that I've chronoed, I've built the gateway, I've built the gas, we can add the gateway. Control 5. After this guy rallies onto the gas, we can rally to the Nexus. We've got a bit of free time. So what can we do? Remember, we can shift click that around and go behind the natural. What are we playing? PVP again. No worries. And remember, if we're going to build a Nexus, we rally back to the gas. And that's our 20th probe. We pause on 20 supply. And this guy is our builder. So scout number one, double tap. Scout number two, double tap. Build Nexus. And while we're waiting for that cyber core, we can add to control group seven, double tap. Control F2. The more you get shit set up early, the cleaner your StarCraft game is going to be. Now, we've got the Nexus, we've got the Cyber Core down, so what do we do? We resume probing. This is going to be like clockwork. The more you practice it, um, if you want to get better at StarCraft, start refining these things. And you're going to find that if you can get a joy out of refining this, 21 second gas, 22 second pylon, change the rally point to the other gas, you are going to become such a better StarCraft player. Now remember, what are we scouting for? At 3 minutes 30, we'll check back to see if my opponent's expanded. Before that point, all we were checking is, are there buildings in their base? They are in their base. That means we're not being proxied. It means our opponent's not doing the most all-in strategy. And that's good. That's really, really good. Okay, guys? Very, very good. That's all we need to know is, has our opponent built three gateways just over here outside our base and about to run into us? That would require a response. But we haven't seen that, so until we see someone proxy us, um, I'm not going to show you guys that response. It's all written up in the document, but I'm sure we'll get there uh, with time at some point in this series. Who knows when? Let's build the robo. And what do we do, guys? Control um, F Control 4. We're going to build another stalker. Our natural's finished. So what do we do, guys? Q lots of probes. Chrono that. Notice 16-3-3. And notice, I've done a cute little thing. I've rallied my next side to different sides of the mineral lines just so the probes kind of naturally spread across. Is this the most important thing in the world? Oh, heck no, not at all, not at all. And remember guys, 33 supply, two gateways. I've got to write that up in the document. I still haven't done it. And, we'll, and then we're going to go pylon. Doesn't matter if it's, you see, that's a heavy, that's a fast warp in pylon. That's a slow warp in pylon. Once there's a warp gate on this pylon, it'll become a fast warp in pylon. The way that works is if a pylon's close to a nexus and control uh, shift shift five for those. Keep building probes. Build a third stalker and build an observer. We can rally that observer. And guys, it's 3.30. <gasps> but there's an expansion, so we don't need to worry. We don't need to worry. Okay, cool. Um, if you build a pylon out here, it's going to be a slow warp in 11 seconds. If it's close enough to a nexus or a gateway that it's effectively powering that, it's a four second warp in. 
Just a cute little tidbit for you guys. So you want to keep probing here. We want to build an immortal as well. Set the rally point back. And remember, guys, what are we going to build? Oh, we're going to... We have that probe still on the army here. So let's grab our army, put that on control group one. And when these gateways are finished, we're going to warp in three more stalkers. Keep building probes in the meantime. You must construct additional pylons. Apparently we're supply blocked. So let's build a pylon there. We'll build another pylon here. Notice how quickly I did that. You don't need to do it that quick. I'll slow down. Um, we're missing a guy off gas right now. Looks like I pulled a guy off gas to build something. That's a that's a pig move. So we're going to build a twilight now. Get that. We're up to saturation. So we take both gases. The mortal pops out. We add it to key. And remember, guys, we've got six stalkers. Well, technically only five. We've got six in the model. We don't need to do anything else. No more unit production unless we see a reason. Do we see a reason? No, we see a guy who's expanded and is building lots of pylons and stuff. There's no reason to build units right now. And guys, what's our probe count at? 43. So we're just going to build a couple more probes. Saturate these gases. Shit, and that was a shift click there. And that's it. Beautiful. We are where we need to be. So what are we going to do, guys? Gateway time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I really hate this gateway, actually. <laughs> So is that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight? Okay, we only need seven. Seven's plenty. Ten gates is a lot for two days. Control name. click, shift five. We're gonna chrono boost charge, and then what do we do, guys? Templar archives, and then pylons. And this is a bit awkward because there's only one path up here, so it's a little awkward getting around these. But check it out. We've, we've, we've finished our setup, right? What else do we do? We can build one more immortal this time and chrono it, and then the warp prism can come out after that. And once you've got all your infrastructure, you might feel greedy because you weren't building defensive units. But now we can just build units as much as we want because we've got nothing else to do. You've built a ton of pylons. And from here, all we focus on is warp in zealots, build pylons. Warp in zealots, build pylons. And we want to get that warp prism ready. So what are we chrono boosting in the meantime? Charge and robo because default chrono boost that stuff. When you're early on, you're always going to stack up chrono boost. You're going to forget to use it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. All right, guys, all our gateways are ready. Let's do a big zealot warping. Control click, shift one. And then what else are we going to do? Build a pylons. Now, you might not have enough minerals. That's fine. Notice how quick your minerals come in. So I'm just kind of waiting here. I'm just waiting until I have the minerals. Build four and then go back to mining. And check it out. We've got the setup. All right, grab the prism, add it to control group two. It's time to move to our staging point. So I'm going to attack from the right side. We're going to attack through a move there. Three quarters across the map. Tell the prism to siege up. And remember, we're going to do that same fancy move from the last game. Warp in some zealots. Control, click them or box them. Shift click, uh, shift two. And we're going to bring those across the map as well. And then archons. I have enough gas for four archons right now, guys. So we can warp in four archons. So we're just going to wait for these warp gates to be ready. And then we want to warp in eight high templars. So if you want to be really specific with it, I like to do it like that. I just press the button. I go click, click. Click, 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 click. Just to make sure I don't end up with an odd number and have some high templar. If you just want to spam the key, it's totally fine. Control click, shift two, unsiege it. Let's move that prism right up in front of the base. And let's move in there. Now, void race. So we're going to warp in stalkers on our next warp in because we need units that shoot up. Okay. So we're gathering our units. Notice how I move to the left. I've let my units gather up. We don't attack in a, a column. We attack in as much of a mass as possible. And we grab the stalkers that we've walked in. Shift two. And it looks like, is that all my opponent had? It might be. And you can see here, once again, we hit it just before the eight minute mark with a pretty big supply. None of these supplies are as big as I had in the first game. You're gonna notice. But we're still hitting pretty darn good timings here. And so it's working out really well. Notice we're just kind of moving right in there. And we were managed to overwhelm. You can see our opponents doing a little bit of everything. They've built gateways, but they forgot warp gate tech. And they're trying to make lots of upgrades and um, robo and stargate units. So if I gave them a few minutes, they probably would have had a pretty decent composition. And they're also taking corner bases. So um, yeah, at this level, lots of people doing lots of just kind of mixed kind of funky cool things you can see mixed in there but what we're going to notice here is if you look at the army value look at how much more stuff i have my opponent never really just had any army and with the workers you're also going to see that i just built my work account way quicker and this is why we don't want to focus too much on things like 
Ah, oh, but what if he does a thing? Because more shit beats less shit. The better you macro, the more you can absorb a punch. The more efficient your early game is, the more you can dispatch these players and get to players that are really going to force you to react to them. But you want to focus on creating muscle memory. Because if you focus on reacting in StarCraft without a base la layer of muscle memory, a bunch of settled habits, StarCraft's really stressful. But if you treat StarCraft as like building habits until they're a bit automatic and then doing some strategy and some reactions and some cool tactics on top of that, you're going to find it much more enjoyable. Um, it's just going to early on be very much about this. Now, notice that a lot of people be like, are you doing an all in? Are you, you know, are you doing this? Uh, I, I'm committing very hard to a two base attack. Is it somewhat all in? I mean, it would be if it wasn't for the fact that I'm ahead in workers by so much almost every single game. Almost every single game, right? So, am I committing to a two base attack? Yes. Is that bad? No. Especially when people are new to StarCraft and know very little about it, they 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 very they're like, oh, I don't want to be a cheeser. I don't. Oh, everyone's cheesing me. Everyone's all linning me. I want to play properly. And the thing is, we are playing properly. We are investing in our economy, and playing properly basically just means doing things in a coherent way. What do I mean? A lot of players on the ladder are out there, and this hand's trying to go that way. And this hand slapping themselves in the face and one leg is just spasming on the ground. And it's like, if I, if I look at their replays, it's like a human body that is not working together. Everything's going in different directions. It's like watching two Siamese twins pull in different directions. That's, that's bad StarCraft. That's not good StarCraft. It's not, if I build workers and defend, I'm playing properly. And if I never attack, I'm playing, that's, that's not playing proper StarCraft. You can, you can do a style like that where you're heading to the late game and you're super expert and it can be proper StarCraft if you're doing a lot of things correctly. But a better way to learn the game is saying, hey, let's try and macro up to two workers full as quickly and efficiently as possible. And, and let's actually try and keep improving on that. But then let's also get better at our engagements. And so far, my opponents have put up so little resistance. I haven't had impetus to learn and that's kind of annoying for me because I, I really like running into some stiff resistance my attack not going well because that's really easy to learn from in these games we're just rolling them so what do we have to do we have to be a little bit more focused on our own internal uh benchmarks and saying well how can i improve against myself at least so i haven't been doing it every game you guys should be doing this every game obviously i'm talking about so many different things right now and introducing concepts but for you guys, if you build a habit of just benchmarking or playing the rewind game, where at the end of the game, you're like, ooh, I think my opponent had a hidden base. Or I think my opponent had about 120 supply um, and 60 probes when they hit me with that big stalker attack. And then you actually look at the replay and you compare your perception of what you think happened in the game to what actually happened. These are really good ways to improve your game knowledge. Um, speaking of benchmarks, that's what we're looking for right now, guys. So that's where we're going to notice. Here we are in this game. All right, so this is our benchmark, guys. So, 7.45. All right, guys, let's, let's type it up. PVP on Glittering Ashes. Um... It's like game four. So what was the timing here? So this was so much quicker, right guys? 7.45 over two minutes faster. Wow, that's pretty sick, right? And we had 44 probes, 10 gates. Charge. Two base. And then what's our army look like? What's our army look like? Two Immortals, four Archon, 17 Zealots, five Stalkers. Okay. Two Immortals. So it's 17 Zealots, right? Two Immortals, four Archons, five Stalkers. And that's pretty sick, man. Like, this is a pretty damn good army, right? It's not that much worse than the other one. Obviously, we are a little down on supply, right? 115. And we're about to warp in six more Stalkers. About 
to warp in six stalkers. We should add another 12 supply on that. But you can see already, okay, cool. We're hitting way faster. The build's coming together. And um, this is fantastic, guys. Oh, oh, we've got to fix up the build. Great, great suggestion from chat. Yes, yes, yes. So I was very unsure about the gate timing. So this should be 33. That was in bold because I was like, I have no idea what the supply timing would be. 33 supply, two gates, and then we go plus pylon. The pylon will go down then. Okay, yeah. Pylon pairs up with those gateways. Beautiful. All right, guys, so we are in bronze one, working our way forwards. Um, what is our MMR? Okay, guys, we're on the way to silver. Only a couple wins away from silver. Remember that when you first ladder, you have provisional MMR. So your first 25 games, you, you gain and lose a buttload of MMR until it figures out where you belong on the ladder. So that's totally fine. And remember, you can always leave league. So if you feel you're in too high a league or too low a league, uh, you can always leave league and get replaced. Um, but it will not demote you mid-season otherwise. It will, of course, actually match you with lower players, but that is what it is. Okay, guys, control seven for our Nexus. Rally to the natural, queue up two probes, change the rally point back. This guy is going to be our builder, but then he's going to be our scouting probe. So we go build pylon. Remember, we want that power field just touching the edges of the ramp, just short of that. Mine minerals, and then you can build the gateway. Back up here, queue up extra pylon uh, probe and an extra two probes, in fact, right? And guys, we're going to set up camera locations. So that was our rally point. Control F2. Double tap 7. Control F1. And as soon as the pylon's finished, we chrono boost. We then go down here and we build a gateway. And then we go across the map. We're going to then select the gateway. Control 5. Jump back into the main. Queue up two more probes. 17 gas. Queue back to minerals. Just like clockwork, guys. It's the same thing every time. 16 on minerals. So we rally to the gas now. Let's finish our camera locations. So that's gonna be control F3, control F4, control F5. And we wanna queue our probes right up to 20 supply. So we rallied to the gas, we now rally there. And our probe, we wanna double tap probe, jump home, double tap probe, jump home. This guy can go on control two, double tap probe, holy shit. Is he still chasing that? All right, so what we're doing, guys, what are we doing? This is called Ring Around the Rosy. Oh, he stopped chasing us. That's all right, we can just hide. <laughs> all right, don't get distracted. Don't get distracted. Look, I actually said two probes. Send them back. Build the Nexus. Build the Cyber Core. Go back to mining and continue the build. Okay, guys, remember, we paused on 20. Now we've got the Nexus and the Cyber Core built. We want to go back to probing. We want to build the second gas. We want to rally to the second one. And we're gonna build that pylon as well, and then we're gonna set up those um, those hotkeys, okay guys? So, what do we do? Go to the natural, add to the control group, so shift seven, double tap seven, control F2. Um, the cyber core does not need a hotkey. Uh, keep putting probes, we pause on our probes for a second there. Guys, what did we see? Buildings in their base, we're not being proxied. And at 3.30, we'll check what that guy sees, okay? So now we make a Stalker as well as Warp Gate, and we Chrono Boost both of them. Pig has giant hands. It's probably easier for Pig to reach things. Guys, I'm using the core. I'm using the core. Everything is sitting right underneath my keys. <laughs> it's, it's the easiest setup to reach. All right, guys. So remember, after the Stalker and that, we go Robo. Keep building Stalkers. We can set that one on a control group. Keep building probes here, guys. Now, if your guy's ever doing that, you can select him and press return cargo. Because he obviously was going to otherwise waste time going up into the main. Keep building probes. And remember, 33 supply. We want double gate, guys. So I don't quite have 300 minerals, so just wait until we're close at least. And then we can go... Oh! So we're going to go... Notice I didn't just build it straight away, because this guy could have got trapped in this corner. We go two gateways, control click, add them to my hotkey. Send that guy back to the natural. And we want to build that third stalker. So remember, if we build that third stalker on time, it should pop out right around the time warp gate finishes. And we should be good. Oh, what's this? 3.30, he has a nexus. We'll just put a spray tag down and let him die. All right, guys, let's make an observer. Rally that across the map. Keep building probes. I forgot to build a pylon after my gateways, guys. So remember, build two gateways, build a pylon. That's going to stop you from hitting this 46 supply block, okay? Now, after the observer pops out, what do we do, guys? Control F2. Change that rally point. Queue up an immortal. 
keep queuing probes up. Very important to queue up probes. More important to keep probes and pylons building than it is to warp in your units. Okay, guys? And then we warp in these three stalkers. And you know what? What if our opponent has an oracle up? Don't worry. Look how quick our observer is going to scout, guys. This is awesome. We are in such a good spot. Build another pylon. Why? Because we're almost supply blocked. Let's go double gas here. Because we're getting very close. And what's next, guys? You know what it is. Twilight Council. So we build the Twilight Council. And we're getting our last probes now, remember. See, we're at 41. So these last three probes is actually going to be all we need. I'll queue up one more probe there. Just for shits and gigs. Because I think that actually counts probes that are in production as well, right? I think it does, actually. I think it does count your probes that are in production. Maybe not the ones that are in the queue, but the actual ones that are building it does. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. We can add the Immortal there. And then what do we do, guys? This is where... You guys, we're in Bronze 1 now. Okay, we've learned our build. It's time to start obsessing over our scouting and staring at units and going, What does this mean? What does this mean? Uh, uh, uh. No, I'm kidding. Stop fucking looking at your scouting. You're in Bronze League. Stop it. Stop. Resist the urge. You don't need to know what it means. He's got an expansion. We've got an expansion. We're going for two base army. We should be fine. What do we do, guys? We follow the build. We build six gateways. Remember, what do we do after the gateways? We build lots of pylons, and they're all backing up Artosis. Remember, we don't want Artosis to be on his own. So, as always, Rotterdam. Tasteless. Maynard. And Zombie Grub. Fear Dragon doesn't make it on this one. Let's control click the gateways and shift five. Let's build that Templar Archives. Oh, I'm missing a gateway. I've only got nine gateways. It doesn't matter, guys. It, it really doesn't matter. We just do that this time. Let's Chrono Boost another Immortal. He killed my Observer. So we looked over here, and it looks like, oh no, he built some cannons. So we were, we were sitting on top of some cannons, which are detectors, and they uh, obviously saw what was up. We can build some Zealots, add those to our control group. We can queue up a Warp Prism, and what else are we going to do, guys? Pylons. It's always better to overbuild pylons than it is to get supply block. Getting supply block is so painful. Uh, so, extra immortals out. We're making the warp prism. All our gateways are ready. What are we doing, guys? Just zealots. Remember, we don't want to make archons because archons can't fit through that choke point. So if you make any archons or you recall them behind your wall, you're going to have to kill your own gateway to let them out of your base. <laughs> Fear Dragon supply block. For now. This one's Fear Dragon. He gets... He gets Nigelated. He gets, he gets left down behind the mineral line. Alright guys, once again, what are we doing? We warp in one more round of zealots. Do -do 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 -do. Control click. Shift one. What are we doing? A move to there. And then, oh, my warp prism's not on the control group. So, put that on number two. Move it there. Shift phasing mode. Man, this is so chill, guys. This is so chill. This is really... What am I even doing? Okay. Oh shit, pull back. Pull back. So two Archons, three Archons, four Archons. Didn't have enough gas for the fifth Archon, okay? We morph those, we shift one them. And because his base is right there, I mean, actually, we'll, we'll, I still like to move my prism nice and close. And not only that, guys, I'm actually going to set up a camera location there as well. So I can go to my main or I can go to my warping plane. Oh, he's behind us. Okay, so I'm going to A-move my army back towards his army. And he's got a pretty good little army here. Those Zealots are not fighting, so I can bring them over to help. Or they can just fight these guys, and then we can attack move them. And we can try to warp in more Zealots. Zealots are the quickest unit to reinforce. Control click, shift one. And Zealots are so much better than Stalkers. You see my opponents I made some upgrades and macroed pretty well. It's a lot better than the opponents I've played up to now. But notice they kept making Stalkers. So this brings us to an important point. What is the most criminal thing that I see players do on the ladder right through to Masters League? And that is make stalkers. The stalker costs 175 resources. It has about half the damage output of a zealot. And it's about the same hit points and toughness. It just costs way more. And it has way lower damage output. So it's almost double the cost. Why would you build stalkers? And the reason is always the same. I saw pros do it. Pros do it. It must be good. The stalker is an amazing unit. If, if you guys make blink and you have amazing control amazing amazing micro okay otherwise the stalker is just a worse unit than the zealot what if they make air then we can definitely make stalkers for sure 
Um, they still aren't the greatest, especially against, say, Void Rays, but they'll get the job done if we if we know how to micro them correctly and we can mass them well enough. Yeah. Stalkers shoot up and down. They also have Blink, which is an amazing ability. If you've got great control, we can just pull them back and shoot and move and shoot and move. But that's elite, high-level skill for stuff. You guys are not going to have the... Um... My opponent did leave, right? Right, guys? Did my opponent leave? I'm not sure if my opponent left. Because this map is weird. They did leave? Because it doesn't give you a score screen button on this on this map. <laughs> um, but yeah, basically, as a general purpose fighting unit on the ground, the Zealot just packs way more bang for buck. And guess what? We've got an observer out there. We can scout. We can say, oh, he's going. Yeah, let's go stalker heavy this time. Something like that. Um, the thing is, you know what's really funny, guys? Is most of the time against air, you're better off going Zealots. Because if your opponent's building air, air units tend to suck at fighting ground. And say your opponent's got like a few Void Rays or a few Muters, you can often just A move Zealots and kill their whole economy and infrastructure or a large portion of it. And then you can make Stalkers and Archons after doing that. So still committing to that attack will kill most air build orders, even without any Stalkers. Also, Archons, amazing versus things like Void Rays, Phoenixes, Muters, all that sort of stuff. Uh, yeah, that map has some weird issues with it. That map's not even meant to be in the ladder pool, but it's, it still is. <laughs> That's just, that map's a bit weird. So if you guys are building Stalkers by default, it just doesn't make any sense. At what league would you start more aggressive scouting, says Boogles. Um, I mean, we've already got all the scouting that we need. We just need to, if we want to, we can start looking at the Observer more. Because I'm still hitting home the tiny details, it's just not worth until our build's a bit more automatic, finding that moment. So in these next few games, I will find a moment just to kind of go, hey, what units is my opponent building? Just to get like a real general read. We can kind of go, oh, he's being very greedy or very aggressive. It's just that so unimportant until you're in at least gold league that I don't want to talk about it too much early on. We'll touch on it a little bit though in these next few games for sure. And guys, we got a different matchup. Oh, oh my god this is my first non-pvp right holy crap so apparently there's quite a few bronze players uh playing protoss but as we enter the, the depths of silver we are going to find things so guys build a probe control seven for the nexus so rally that probe down there and we're going to make control f1 after double tapping that control f2 control f3 keep queuing up probes here guys control f4 and control f5 so if you're really organized from the start, you can get your camera location set up much earlier. Remember pylon? We want to just make sure that touches the edges. Find some minerals, and then we can build that gateway. Keep building probes. And remember, you want to queue up two more probes, right? Because we want the probe production to never be interrupted at all. You must construct additional gateway there. After that, we want to scout. Standard scout pattern, guys. Chrono boost the probes. We'll take the gas as well. Exact same build order as always. And you know what, guys? We can see this guy's mining alone. So we're even going to rally the probe there in the hope that they stack up nicely. And you'll notice this time around, the workers are all stacked up. We'll introduce that concept properly a bit later and actively managing that. For now, we won't focus on it too much. This guy's on number one. Back to the main base, number one. Back to the main base using our camera location. So double tap one, F1. And then what do we do? We change the rally point. Put this guy on control group two. We build the nexus. While we're waiting for the money, we're gonna shift seven, double tap seven, control F2. Oh, F1, F2, look at that, perfectly centered. Mm, build a cyber core, go back to mining and resume probes absolutely beautiful what's going on in his base guys we see he is not proxying me he's already built three depots which is a really horrendous build order he's got about 30 free supply we'll just let our probe die there we'll put some spray paint on the ground say gg to him all right guys let's stop being distracted build the second gas in the pylon they're both a little bit late here not the end of the world though you know sometimes you get distracted by things so um once we've got one more probe rallying out there that's when we can rally both to the natural Let's check our camera locations are up. One, two, three, four, five. Stalker, warp gate, and we can chrono boost both of those. You could see the stalker was chrono boosted for a few seconds. If you do it properly, that won't get chronoed at all, guys. 
All right, so what do we got? Full base, so let's rally, and then we're gonna select that nexus, rally it to the other side of the mineral line. You don't need to do that, I just like to do it, because it feels good. Let's queue up another Stalker. Let's keep queuing probes, and always when that natural finishes, drop that chrono. And what's next, guys? Robo. Is this ethical smurfing? It's just smurfing, Crony. People can dress it up however they want. I, I've called it ethical smurfing in the past, jokingly, but it is just smurfing. So guys, remember control five on the rowboat. We're setting the rally points, We're having a good time. Let's send another probe across actually. And let's try to hide that behind the natural just to see if we can um, see if there's an expansion or not since he killed our base. Oh, 33 supply guys. So what do we do at 33? We go two gateways and then we want to build a pylon, okay? So let's control click those, add them to five. Get that pylon, lots of production space. Keep it there, keep putting these probes. Let's drop one more corner there. You have not enough minerals. And we're just, you have notice not I keep, enough why am I spamming the probe key? Because I didn't have enough money. And if you're chrono boosting probes, you want to queue at least three probes on that nexus, you or you're going to run out of production time, okay? All right, guys, so we're going to rally this observer across the map. We can chrono boost that as well. And we can just build another pylon here. Just always adding a pylon every now and then. Because remember, we're about to build an immortal, which chews up four supply, three stalkers, which is another six supply. That's 10 supply. That's gonna disappear on these early defensive units that we always build. <clears throat> All right, better get some water after this, eh? <laughs> Sounding a little bit hoarse. Sounding a little bit hoarse. All right, so we've got three stalkers warping in. Box them, shift one. Keep building probes. <clears throat> and we want to get that Twilight Council, guys. Very important to not delay the Twilight Council, but... We're almost supply bomb, aren't we? We've got another pile on here. And then we are saturated, so let's go both gases. And you know what, guys? Our opponent's on one base. Actually, I should have already reacted to this. Our opponent's on one base, so let's build a shield battery. And let's put a bit of attention into our scout. What's he doing? Oh, we see, oh, it's a command center. It's just on the high ground. And our opponent's building missile turrets and bunkers on one base. So this is classic Bronze League tactics. Our opponent fell into the trap of going, what if an Oracle comes in? What if a DT comes in? Because we see the second command center, sign of greed, static defense, sign of a defensive stance. Okay, guys? So none of those things are scary whatsoever. Build one more pylon. All right, so we want a Chrono Boost charge. <clears throat> um, we queue up that second Immortal if we want. I would argue, though, guys, it's more important to get your gateways rather than killing up one immortal. And then we want to go for six gateways. Oops, I misplaced that. Remember this tight grid I'm talking about, guys? Six, seven gateways, even. So we're just waiting for 150 minerals to build this last one. And then, of course, control click. Add it to our gateway hotkey. We can then build the Templar Archives. And then what do we do, guys? Our Tosis is getting lonely. Tasteless. May not. Lot of them. Zombie grub. And then uh, we're gonna go build Ravi over here. That's that's fear dragon. Okay. Um, add these guys to the army. Let's make a warp prism. Let's chrono boost charge. And uh, <laughs> he is in chat and he's just dropped some question marks in case you. <laughs> You're important. Your job is to spot enemy attacks coming. You're very important, Fear Dragon. What do you mean? I'm not throwing you under the bus. I'm putting you in a place of prime importance, okay? <laughs> That's your job, all right? Uh, we don't have Gary and Bob in this series, which is a little unfortunate, guys. Now, our opponent's defending on one base, guys. So obviously we can't break up a ramp against siege tanks into bunkers and turrets. This game's gonna go at least 45 minutes, and this is really unfortunate because I wanted to teach you guys how to play, and my opponent's turtling like an idiot. I'm just joking, guys. Our opponent's building units on one base, we're building units on two base. So we have double the income, which means we're making double the units, which means we can do the exact same attack that we always do. A move here, tell the prism to go there and siege up, warp in one more round of zealots as we go across. We're gonna have so much more stuff that shift shift one that there's just no way there's no way that our opponent can do anything now obviously if the attack fails we can go to plan b i haven't really mentioned plan b yet we'll start mapping that out maybe after this game 
And that would be involved taking multiple next eye and all that sort of stuff. So we move forward here. And guys, how many Archons? Well, we have enough gas for as many as we possibly can make. So we're going to warp in 10 High Templar, 5 Archons. Now, what's really cool is you want to give yourself high ground vision here, guys. So we're going to activate Pervert Mode. Surveillance Mode, technically. And notice that gives it a lot of extra vision of what our opponent's up to. Now, if we're really fancy, we can try to micro our mortals in this fight, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to attack move our units to here. If not up there, because the parthing will do about, you want to do it in front of the full wall off. And then we're going to control click the immortals. We're going to try to micro them around. And just try to move them towards the tanks. And click on those wherever possible. And now that the tanks are gone, we can just aim them. Let's make some more zealots here. Control click, shift one. That Zealot could go for that tank. Now, our opponent did get wiped out. You can see he had about 400 turrets in the main base. And this is the classic mistake of paranoia about what your opponent could do to you rather than fundamentals, right? So what was my opponent doing? Uh, massing tanks and turrets on one base. And because of that, they didn't have a, a good economy. Um, he was very safe first oracles. And to be honest, if the tanks were further back and he had a thicker wall off with bigger buildings, say three barracks or some engineering bays or something like that, that might have actually been a disaster to attack into because the tanks were all exposed on the cliff edge. We saw that as long as I knew how to spot the high ground, then we were going to be able to kill that. GG's. So not a particularly exciting game, but cool. Um, we can benchmark the attack again. I think I've started a little bit lower than normal. All right, guys, so when my attack hits, we can see 8 minutes, 125 supply, 46 probes, 18 zealots, 2 immortals, 5 archons. This timing's pretty consistent, right? We're finding somewhere we could probably hit as fast as 7 minutes if I were to not build the early, the immortal as qu quite as early. Or if I was to not warp in the early stalkers and get my gateways up early and stuff like that. Oh, we had a base. Cheeky little bugger. Everyone's taking hidden bases. That's such a bad hiding spot. At least take it in the corner, bro. <laughs> So Bronze League, everybody's trying to win with like kind of tricks, you'll notice, and no one's worked on their fundamentals of just like how to secure an expansion. So we've gone straight through Bronze and come out. We haven't really had to adapt anything. We haven't really met any adversity, right? There's been a little bit of Void Ray harass, but essentially we're finding that Bronze League, nobody has figured out how to build anywhere near as much stuff as me. So the trick there is obviously we've got clean mechanics we're using, probably playing a little fast, but you're also going to notice here as we get into silver, I mean, I am massively outproducing my opponents in both workers and army early on, and I'm then turning that into production in a very organized way. So you'll see a lot of my opponents like, oh, I'll build a Stargate, oh, I'll build a Robo, mm, I'll build a Gateway, mm, I'll build two cannons. But what are we building every single time, guys? Seven gateways all at once. Seven gateways, right? That one probe puts down seven gateways, the Templar archives, the pylon, that set piece.